The following is a presentation of TFNN. of our trading hour here. Oh, on and on and on. Are we? Oh, again, huh? Okay, give it up. Thanks. Uh, and welcome to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And it always the same thing. Doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing, what position you are in. It is time to be here. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, let's put some lipstick on this pig. No, uh, I don't think so, that. Maybe my day. I'm just guessing. Uh, oh, I forgot to do that, too, didn't I? Okay. Eh, sometimes you got to remind me out there. So we'll go live with our chart out here. Uh, and the thought for the day, the swordfish has no natural predators to be afraid of except the pinfish which is thought to be mightier. Oh, I like that one. Uh, anyway, uh, we got a market, and it's no real uh, surprise, is it? Uh, kind of a one-note Johnny out here until we go out and test uh, low 4100s on the S&P cash or 410 on the spies. I do not think we could possibly have a low end. Uh, a ton of earnings, uh, some good, some bad. And uh, what else do we have? Uh, what are the spies at right now? 417. So not that far, much farther, only seven points lower. Um, and again, at that point, maybe you get it. So first thing to do, we want to do is start looking at the volume. And it's Friday, a little lighter, but not light enough. Uh, if we had $5 billion here, I'd be looking for a... Uh, bounce before the end of the day. Maybe we get a little one, but I don't think there's a whole lot. Uh, we've got 6.8 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated uh, tape. If you are unfamiliar with this, I'll give you a link to it. Uh, just email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, uh, what else do we have out here? So we, the volume is a little lighter, but not light enough. Uh, as I said, uh, you, know, you get this close uh, to a previous low. It's kind of like a magnet. It's going to come back and get it, especially if you came down there with a lot of volume. Your odds are that much better. But um, I don't understand. Uh, I had a lot of folks uh, send me some emails over uh, the last, I don't know, four or five hours. Uh, one was uh, you didn't like the uh, way that uh, Amazon and uh, Apple ran into earnings. You know, a long time ago, I think previous to maybe 2005 or six, before they changed the laws, um, if you released data, there wasn't a lot of blowback if you were the CEO. If you uh, gave the heads up to some people in the in the uh, hedge fund community that you liked and bought some favors from them, now you can end up in jail. So there aren't a lot of people that know a lot of stuff. Because uh, you got, if you're CEO and you're making 100 million a year, you really want to throw that away uh, for a little bit of good faith from some fund manager? Not anymore. Uh, back in the olden days, if you were making a million dollars a year, uh, maybe back in 2005, uh, maybe you could make an extra couple hundred grand eh, on the side, uh, given a little uh, nod of the head, a little. Uh, uh, thumb of the nose to somebody and let them know the jig is up or uh, that they should be going long. That doesn't happen much anymore, if at all. I remember they caught so many of those folks in the uh, uh, quote, quote, expert game. Um, the one guy, I guess, is back trading now, but he hired a bunch of private investigators to put out phony ads for, uh, what was it? Oh, for uh, job applications. And they'd interview the folks and try to suck out anything that they knew about them. I mean, that's been the cool. The brain suck has been a long 
time tradition in Silicon Valley, but uh, to actually get inside information uh, by going after uh, folks with phony job apps, uh, ads was something else. Uh, those, uh, I think a handful of those folks went to jail. Uh, one guy lost a lot of his cash, but he's back now. Uh, wasn't out, but uh, yeah, you put a few people behind bars and you know, does it still happen? Probably a little bit, but uh, not that much. So if everybody starts selling off, I tend to think that someone believes something that someone told them uh, uh, by somebody else that it didn't originate with, uh, the old telephone trick. So I didn't like that um, because there aren't a lot of leaks these days. Uh, if the now the whole market went with it, uh, got everybody sucked in. Uh, but uh, am I uh, predicting the end of the world? No. Am I predicting a break of 4,100? No. Um, this is uh, one of the times where I talk about you should drive uh, like uh, you should trade like you drive in fog. And that is just assume that you can't see as far as you think you can. Um, you can see about 25 percent as far in fog as you can in uh, in actual uh, uh, clear air. The problem, everybody believes in fog that they can still see the 100 percent percent that they can in clear air. So I don't have to make a decision until we see 4,100 or 410 or so in the S&P cash. Uh, you got a lot of volume there. It's going to take a lot to break it. Uh, could we exceed it very shortly? And I think the answer is true. Now, we've got a lot of confluing, uh, confluing, uh, conflu confluence of events. On Monday, we really have kind of the first day of fund buying. You may even see a little bit of a markup, as I said, before the end of the day. That's not uncommon. I'm not thinking you get a great deal. Uh, let's keep an eye on it here. For 1711 is what I see, which is off 2.5%. Um, but, uh, you know, you get this close to a low. Just think of it as magnet or gravity. Uh, can you put enough rockets on a, a uh, uh, enough motors on a rocket to get it uh, to go to the moon? You can. It's a lot tougher than to just go into orbit. So can you get a bounce uh, on Monday? You can. Uh, but uh, there's a great deal of things out there that I've had in my newsletter that suggest that uh, we probably don't find uh, a uh, a very credible low. I mean, more than uh, 24 hours. Uh, until maybe late next week. I think, uh, you know, last fund buying lasted one whole day and then you got crushed uh, like a baby seal on an ice floe or a redheaded stepchild or a rented mule. I like all three uh, allegories, but uh, that's not it. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot of emails here. We'll go through as many as we can. I haven't looked in the den here. Is there anything here? Da, 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 da. Sound breaking up. Uh, hopefully, sound is better now. Don't know. Nobody in the den saying much of anything. When we come back, we'll do a little history. We'll get into some charts. We'll uh, look at what I've seen. That's uh, that'll be uh, when we return. Like a bad rag. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. 
Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we got a, a uh, email from uh, Roger who says, I took your suggestion of uh, the Microsoft uh, puts this morning. Where do you think they expire out today? I'm holding for 280. I think we see that's where it's going to uh, come out. Um, also, uh, yeah, thanks for your uh, call on Apple between 160 and 165 we're sitting at 160 yeah um I, I think i said it in the den i don't remember if i said it on the radio or not yesterday but i remember during earnings i brought it up a few times and that was they had a very big lock on uh apple between 160 and 165 going into earnings so i wasn't buying all the uh, upside of uh going to 180 or something that uh was being pushed out before the earnings call came out. Um, you know, down 2%, is that a real big deal? No. Are they still kind of the class in the field? Yes. Um, are they immune to um, especially what they have? And we talked about going into this, which is uh, supply constraints uh, and uh, labor uh, production constraints. And could you go below and Bust 160 today. It depends on how ugly it gets, but uh, they're going to hold it to 160, I think, as long as they can. But uh, that's on the downside. Now, in the last five minutes, could you see a lot of people covering their short positions? Yes. Uh, Apple probably has too many shorts in it already. Um, one of the things I did see that made me not want to just uh, want to uh, buy puts for today and not go a lot farther uh, into something else was a uh, uh, huge short. Uh, selling in the last 15 minutes of the day yesterday. And generally, uh, when you see that, uh, you're going to get a bounce. Uh, the downside is if you don't get a bounce, you're in real trouble. That means that you probably had a lot of people uh, that uh, were spot on in shorting. And uh, it's going to be hard to uh, get those folks to uh, hop off of that anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot out here uh, until maybe Monday. Maybe you get, a little, you know, a little bit of a tail out here um, into the close. Um, you're probably going to get some kind of bounce on Monday, maybe Tuesday. Uh, but my guess is it's going to be a little bit. Then 
uh, we're going to go really attack that 410 for uh, 4100 area on the S&P cash. Give me a call today, 877-927-6648. Uh, did I get everything out here? Uh, okay, hopefully we've got it. Uh, why does it say something now? I've got something really weird going. There we go. Okay, hopefully we've got everything taken care of. Let's see, anything else? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I took uh, the 287.50 puts this morning. Uh, what else did we have here? Um, great call holding tight on a bearish stance against the bounce in the markets. Yesterday did, uh, um, I'm by holding puts. Okay. Um, power sold. Okay. Uh, do you have any information to show this is, uh, uh, false? Please let me know. Um, yeah, I've seen this kind of floating around. My guess is you're going to have to wait to know whether it's true or false into, uh, next year with some congressional investigations but uh yeah uh china is buying a huge amount of uh, lithium um and other rare uh, earths uh in uh, afghanistan and of course um our friends there in the taliban will be spending that money um how much of that is uh, uh corruption in the government i do not know and uh, but uh, who knows? Maybe we'll know sooner than I think. Uh, OK, uh, questions about other things going on. Let's do a little bit of history and then we'll move on. Uh, yep, it's still short the rips and cover the dips. Uh, and I think that uh, as long as the market uh, continues to move lower, it's doing the job of the Fed and uh, maybe a little less chance today that uh, the Fed comes in and does a Pearl Harbor uh, attack with higher interest rates. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. In 2004, the World War II Memorial opens up in Washington, D.C. to thousands of visitors, providing overdue recognition for those 16 million U.S. men and women who served in the Second World War. The memorial is located at 7.4 acres on the former side of the Rainbow Pool, the National Mall between the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial. The Capitol Dome is seen to the east. Arlington Cemetery is just across the Potomac to the west. And, of course, uh, hey, you got to probably give a little uh, uh, tip of the hat to, of course, uh, 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 saving uh, Private Ryan to eh, kind of getting everybody uh, uh, to remember that uh, just what everybody gave us. And how weak and worthless we are today. Uh, but uh, still uh, a lot of great people in the military. Uh, even though uh, they're trying to be forced off. Uh, but, uh, okay, what else out here? Okay, let's get to the emails. Um, okay. First uh, uh, is natural gas. Uh, do we have a double repo pattern that would set this up for a pullback into... Um, the summer and maybe a rebuy later on. Um, you know, you've got a pretty good indication that this could come back to 15. What you don't have today is a lot of volume. Uh, yesterday, you had 7.4 million shares today. You got about five. Um, you need to close below the three by three. We don't have it. So this is not a prediction. You want to watch, but if you do close back below it, pretty good indication. You're going to go back where it started, and my guess is that support comes in at about 1750 across the summer. No matter how much everybody yells and screams about natural gas, there's too much of it, uh, a little bit too less now. But uh, I think that's probably, eh, I'm going to say August or September, uh, back there at $18 is probably where the next big run could get, and that next big run could go way above that next winter. Uh, do, do, do. oh, got an amber alert here. 
I can't turn those off. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Bringing up XOM. I looked at that earlier this morning. I didn't see a lot of stuff. Uh, 85 was kind of looking at the low. What are we at here now? Uh, 85.72, so yeah, uh, 85 on the close. I don't see a whole lot. You had a fairly nice setup uh, in Exxon Mobil with a garlic pattern. Gave it up all fairly quickly, came right back down to a gap. Uh, the act of support, uh, you've got the bounce. Uh, good garlic pattern, but uh, it's an all things now. Take If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we return. Got another question. Volume of the QQQ is tracking lower than yesterday. Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, I hope I'm not stuck in hope mode. It never ends well. Um, you really want to come out, at least in the Qs, and test 317. You got into 315, but not light enough. So you might find the Qs holding up a little bit better than the S&P or the SPIs. But uh, eh, you do have light volume today. Like I said, you got fun buying. You might get a little bounce out of here 
a lot of times one of the, here's what I'm going to say is the real downside to the Qs. And that's my power law vector indicator number that tries to get the energy between the highs and the lows out here. So you got a 15 on the way up. You got an 18 on the way down. Uh, is it the end of the world? No. But it's uh, one of the few times we've had this in the last 10 years. Uh, generally, the downsides have been on lighter volume if they've been on long, a lower amount of time. If you get a bounce, the problem you have to worry about is that it just jumps the creek and goes through and you finally get a lot of volume. What I would love is it come down, go through that number, break it, and then come back up and close above it uh, and see some folks in there. Now, even that means that you're not going to be off to a V bottom. Uh, generally, if you come down on any more energy or even the same energy, you probably want to hope for the best, and in that, you're thinking about maybe some consolidation, uh, and uh, once that consolidation's in, you move higher. If this came back down on much lighter volume in this uh, leg from March 29th into April 27th, I would be thinking a lot more of a V than a U bottom. So, uh, yeah, uh, you, I'm trying to remember what it uh, was. Let me find it here, because when you talk about hope, it always... Uh, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about three or four times uh, in trading about uh, uh, about Jesse Livermore's saying. It's not that one. Uh, it's this one from Jesse Livermore. The successful trader must fight these two deep-seated instincts. He must reverse what you might call his natural impulses. Instead of hoping, he must fear. Instead of fearing, he must hope. He must fear his loss may develop into a much bigger loss and hope that his profit may become a much bigger profit. And that's kind of it. You've always got to have your emotions on the opposite side of the market um, to probably protect yourself. Um, and uh, be sure enough to be unsure. If you're 100% sure, you're probably on the wrong side. If you're not nervous a little bit, you're probably on the wrong side. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, so we've got that. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, question on Disney. Uh, is there any buyout here? Uh, the problem I'd have with Disney is the same problem I had uh, years ago with Facebook and Google and the rest of these guys, and that is they've hitched their wagon to China, and China's done the pretty much uh, the Chinese communists have done the same thing, which is they uh, figure out everything these guys do and then uh, put them on their way, because at some point, uh, even though uh, all these companies have horribly prostrated themselves and done horrible things. Uh, like Google and Facebook, to try to stay in China. Eventually, there is a bridge too far that even these folks won't do for the almighty dollar, and that's it. So you know what I love to see in Walt Disney? And that is them getting kicked out of China. Uh, then they probably would may find some kind of low. But it uh, doesn't matter what it is. There's only a couple of companies out there, and I don't think Tesla is any different. Uh, these guys are all over there. Um, it is the proverbial uh, scorpion on the back of the frog. Everybody wants to pretend uh, that uh, Russia is the big problem, and it's not a small one. But uh, we have to know that more people are dying uh, in slavery and everything else in China than they are in Ukraine. But uh, it's easy for us to focus on signs of war, uh, signs of evil. Uh, especially in China, a lot harder to see. But uh, all these companies at one time or, or another have uh, covered for uh, extreme wrongdoing uh, and evil uh, by China and have all uh, eventually left China with their tail between their legs. I think uh, at least on uh, Disney's part, what I'm looking for is uh, that everybody doesn't believe that there's some kind of huge 500 million uh, subscriber chair market that they're going to get from these guys uh, that as soon as uh, they got that successful 
uh, China would find some way uh, to do it. And again, uh, the proverbial scorpion on the back of the uh, frog, why'd you do it? And it's because it's in my nature. And I think a lot of people think, uh, especially smart, uh, reminds me of uh, Die Hard. Remember uh, the kind of oily guy with the beard who thought he could uh, negotiate with the terrorists? They all think that they're real smart, uh, much smarter than everybody else. And the reality is uh, you're dealing with uh, pretty much the equivalent of the mob. And just like uh, another good movie reference out here, uh, that was Goodfellas, uh, they'll suck you in. Uh, they'll make you sign lots of papers for huge amounts of insurance and then firebomb your place and make you give them money. Um, probably the best description of dealing with communists, China, as I can say. Uh, Chinese people, great people. Chinese communists, no different than Stalin's communists or Putin's communism or any of the rest of these places that are nothing more than thinly veiled mob hangouts across the country. Uh yeah. yeah, I'm more of a I'm more I'm I'm you know, somebody in the den brought up uh, issues with Florida. I think it's a pebble. I think the big long term thing is, uh, do they have people leaving their subscription service? Uh, the answer is yes, and a lot of them lately. Uh, they are no different than the rest of these folks that made a bunch of money uh, in uh, streaming during the lockdown, and that's going lower. But uh, yeah, they've got. At least from um, uh, the folks that look at this stuff, which is mostly looking at Internet traffic data, uh, it's fairly significantly down over the last month. And it may have nothing to do with what's in the news, news headlines. It may just be more of an issue uh, with people uh, have seeing most of what's out there. Um, I think somebody else pointed a pretty good... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, want uh, you know they're 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 wanting good stuff to watch, and you know the one big thing that made Disney in streaming uh, was uh, of course uh, the Mandalorian, and uh, the executives couldn't wait to get in there and screw it up. The question is, what is uh, is it third season going to be? It's we'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Playing market limbo. Uh, spies uh, now a year, five points away, six, six points away from uh, where I think we're going to find uh, at least the first viable low. I do like headlines. If you look at the Dredge report, uh, first it went after the dollar yesterday. Today it's going after the markets and Amazon and Netflix and the rest. Generally, when we start here seeing those headlines, it didn't instantly uh, give it a couple of days, but. Uh, I got some other questions out here. What do I think on Amazon? Um, I think I said this earlier in the den. Um, I didn't like, of course, the way it was rolling up into earnings yesterday. Um, generally, there isn't they're in a big leak out there. I don't think it's a big surprise that both Apple and Amazon uh, are having supply problems. We've talked about it for a while. Uh, generally, in the stock market, it doesn't matter till it matters, and then it's the only thing that matters. So we're probably going to see it. Uh, we're also, I've got a lot of stuff in my newsletter that says we're pretty close to a low. Um, generally, the last uh, eighth of, uh, uh, of the move is 20% uh, of it. So uh, it, it's about, uh, not quite 20%, but uh, almost double the losses uh, in the last uh, uh, bit of a move uh, than you would normally have. So look for that. I think we're going to have some big kind of push. Maybe it happens today. And maybe we could clean the decks off for Monday, which would be fine. But, uh, yeah, just expect that you're going to have a big move. You're going to have everybody do the wrong thing. They're going to sell. They're going to do everything else uh, that's wrong. And uh, that's how you make money in the stock market, by uh, uh, just uh, looking at the mistakes that people have made in the past because they're going to make the same mistakes in the future. Uh, so that's it. Now, uh, another question out here. What is this? Uh, would I be out at 280 on Microsoft? Yes. I've already got uh, buys in for my puts uh, to get out of them. I don't want to be, I'm not waiting for the last five minutes. Um, another excellent trade. Uh, I know I'm always just one uh, away from another one, but uh, as I say at the end of every show to remind myself, uh, sell when you can, but that also means uh, even if you're on the right side, uh, we're not playing chicken here. You make a bunch of money, take it. Don't be a pig. As they always say, there's those old chestnuts uh, around the market are there for a reason. They stand the test of time. Uh, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So uh, take your cash, especially in the last week. How many of these things have you uh, sure that the bottom was in only to see uh, that we get crushed once again? Uh, and that is the basis of a bear market. And that is it's always offering uh, the, uh, the uh, bulls something, some little bit of scrap uh, of uh, hope until they get crushed, in which case – they lose their hope and their will, and they sell, and a bottom is in. So let's look for that. Look for signs of people capitulating, looking for signs of everybody wanting to go short. 
Um, I couldn't really get it. In fact, somebody brought it up in the den. Um, I couldn't find anybody, or v let me put it this way, I couldn't find uh, but a few people uh, thinking about shorting. Um, and when everybody starts shorting, generally it's time to reflect, stop and reflect. Uh, what is that, uh, Mark Twain? When everybody uh, tends to agree with you, it's time to to uh, stop and reflect. But again, we're probably gonna, probably going to have one of the first uh, bare bottoms. Is that right? Sounds bad. Uh, we're going to have probably a bottom in a bear market for the first time. Um, and we've seen the kind of rips that you get in the top. Um, you're probably going to have a couple of opportunities to buy the low. The first one is going to make you sick because it's going to go back and retest it. The second one may be on lighter volume uh, in consolidation, and then you're going to have your opportunity. But uh, as I've been saying for probably two or three or four weeks, uh, more than likely that first week of May comes with some level of, uh, of uh, a, either a low or high put into the market. Consolidation into the three-day weekend uh, taking you into Memorial Day. Is that, uh, is that right? I always hate mixing up Memorial Day and Labor Day. Is it Labor Day or Memorial Day at the end of May? Anyway, uh, so we'll see that. But yes, uh, so you got a bunch of questions out here. Yes, I'd be out at 280. I'm not going to get greedy on the puts on Microsoft. And uh, no, a lot of times uh, there just isn't anything uh, that I can do in a newsletter then tell you exactly where I'm headed before the market ever opens. Um, by the time 15 minutes goes by, uh, that's an eternity on options that expire on Friday. Okay, what else do we have here? Got a couple more emails. Um, David, I'm along the SQQQ and SDS. Would you close those now? No. Um, you don't have to worry about the, them expiring really at the end of the day. But would I close them at the close? Yes. And I may close them. I'd watch uh, for the last 15 minutes of the day. And if you kind of get in and you're real low, that's probably good. If you bounce before that, you're probably going to get yet another sell-off into the close. And then I'd take the money at the close. And neither one of those is going to give you 100% right. But that's generally the way I trade it. If it bounces early, I stick with it. If it bounces late, um, and, or if it doesn't bounce till like a quarter till the close, is generally well, I close them out. But yes, I would be on the side of closing those out into fund buying on Monday. You're going to get a bounce. I don't know how big it's going to be. Uh, and then I, my guess is everybody's just going to reshort it. But uh, there's a long history, if you go back and look in the charts, of uh, going into fund buying and getting everybody bearish right before they pop it for fund buying. So yeah, could we have another 100 points up on Monday in the S&Ps or Tuesday between the two? Yes. And then I just suspect everybody's going to, if we don't hit and test those lows first, I think we're probably going to see everybody just reshort the market and you're going to get one more retest. But uh, you need a retest of that 4100, uh, 410 area. Uh, for our 11 area on the SPYs. Okay. Uh, got that. Got a couple more emails. Let's take a look. Okay. Wow. I didn't know I can still get uh, insurance on my 25 year old car. Okay. <laughs> Bare bottom. Uh, a blue moon. A blue moon bottom. Uh, the only thing you get from picking bottoms is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's neither safe nor hygienic to pair. Okay. Uh, lots of bear stuff in here. So everybody's getting bearish. Uh, <laughs> and uh, as I said uh, at the very end or uh, beginning of the show, uh, generally it's uh, short the uh, short uh, the rips and uh, cover the dips. So a little bit different. But, yeah, uh, again, don't get too greedy. As I've said now for four weeks, the market's going up three-fourths of the time. So when you get a big down thrust like on this, maybe it lasts a few days. You're going to have a big rip. Then it's generally taking some money and wait like yesterday. Get another opportunity to jump on. 
back this time. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And a question about uh, trying to buy Amazon out here. I think I covered it. Maybe I didn't um, earlier in the show. And that is, I suspect a great deal of people were chasing uh, profits and probably hugely levered up in the hedge fund community on a dip down, I, on a gap down like this with volume. I would never consider about buying. Just You might be right this time, but I doubt it. Uh, the odds are against you that buying within three days of a big gap down is a smart idea. You know, if you're talking about a 15-minute chart and you're talking about getting a few bucks out of it, I don't understand why you would go after Amazon. There's probably easier trades out there. Uh, but at the same time, as I said, uh, wait for the margins to go through. Wait for three days. Uh, I kind of always think of it as this way, and that is uh, – uh, Let's uh, wait for it to tell uh, tell you what to do, and and uh, uh, I just don't touch them. I, I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't do it. And I paid a lot of money to learn to not do it. So I'm not going to learn that lesson once again, especially in a down market. Um, now, another question that comes across uh, from Sam about whether or not I would, uh, what would make me think about buying, which is always a good question. And that is, if we come in and the uh, Dow is down 800 or 900 points on Monday morning, I think that would get me to the point of thinking that uh, I, may, I may not go long equities. I might want to buy uh, some calls in the morning, but I'm going to have to see something that makes everybody want to just throw up so sick that they don't want anything to do with it 
uh, everybody telling us how the market's going to 2,000 uh, in the S&Ps. Uh, get a few of those folks out there. Um, so far, on I watched CNBC just a little today uh, just to see whether or not uh, people had started to throw the towel in. And um, most of the normal flakes and shills are still there. Uh, generally, when they uh, get negative, it is the time to just go positive. So uh, I'm still thinking that uh, there's probably uh, some downside out here that 4,100, maybe even down to 4,000 for you know, a couple hours. Just to freak everybody out. And uh, maybe that's the best time to be buying some calls in the market. Limit, limit your risk. I don't like buying tech. Look at it. Uh, see you Monday. Same back time. Same back time. Remember to cover. You can. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most.